Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. This is June 2nd, 2022, and we are here on the series Get In Tune in June. So we're going to be talking about a lot of emotional situations that surrounded the R. Kelly uh, processing of not just the case, but his everyday person. Um, and how these individuals were, um, how these individuals treated him and what he endured, like as far as, uh, just any, any person, um, I definitely want to, let me close, shut this down and put my phone on. Do not disturb. Okay. I definitely want to talk today about the effects of communication and emotion. So when we communicate emotionally, a lot of things take place. And miscommunication is one of those things that take place. So I hope you enjoyed the June 1st podcast about rejection and denial. And uh, this podcast will be normally updated on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then we'll do our Sundays regular um podcast. Now that is given if something new comes into the case or the update comes for R. Kelly Appeal TV, we're definitely going to let you know about it immediately within that 24 hour uh, phase. So the Robert Sylvester case is built upon emotion. We as a society deal with trauma-based emotion from within our daily lives. And every one of us can agree. I'm sure we can put in a chat or in a live uh, comments how traumatic life has been. And even the littlest of situations, having to sit at a um, stoplight, wondering if you are going to get in trouble because of the fact that you only have one more time to be late at work before they've threatened to fire you. So little small traumatic events, um, you're standing, you know, in a, in a uh, grocery store line and the people in front of you are being very disrespectful. Do you get out of line, go to another line? Do you drop everything you're doing and leave immediately? These are some emotional situations that we're dealing with in our society. What are your thoughts there? So I want to read a song to you from the R. Kelly music collection. And I want you to go and uh, Google it and listen to it because the way that the music industry is working with the streaming, we cannot put it on our channel unless we have permission specifically from the creators, the content owners and all that. So they're trying to mute R. Kelly in that way, but we're going to keep it moving. If they want to get the little penny for the stream, then go ahead on to their channel and listen to it. So I'm going to promote this song today and it's called what I feel. So it says, I'm sick and tired of the games you play. Every move I make your butt got something to say. Scandalize my name when you see it in the paper, trying to turn it all around when it's not that way. Everybody is trying to figure me out. What the hell is wrong with y'all? Just let me live my life. I can't go one day without y'all in my face. Y'all done lost y'all minds if y'all don't hear what I say. Cops chase me when I'm standing still. You know, I ain't done shit wrong. So why you want me in your cell? You don't like my songs. Well, it pays the bills and you cut me down because I keep it real. Sometimes I want to fly far away from here to another place. It ain't worth these tears. Sometimes at night when I close my eyes, I know the haters are busy making up hater lies. Sometimes I laugh trying to keep from crying. If I was playing out of love, then tell me who could I trust? See, I worked so hard just to get ahead. If it wasn't for God, I'd probably be dead. Sometimes I think y'all trying to pull me down. But y'all wasting your time. I got you haters figured out. If you had your way, I'd be lock and key. Everywhere I go, trouble follows me. Where the hell is my father? Shit, it hurts sometimes. There's a hole in me and it rocks my mind. Forgive me, father, for I have sinned. When was your last confession? 
His true fears he left without a care. And that was more than I could bear. When you need my help, I never tell you no. When I need your love, you go, you got somewhere to go. I'm getting sick of this shit, but I'm not going to quit. I've come too far. Got to keep my pockets thick. I get mad as hell, but that's okay. Kick off these shoes because I'm here to stay. I got to let you know, got no time to play. So feel me and all you hear me say. What I'm building up, you can't tear it down because it's built on solid rock land ground. We don't die, we multiply. Hit after hit, living platinum style. Keep my head up high, looking toward the sky. Nothing in my view. Hey, I can fly. Y'all just hate. I can't take no more. And if you feel me, raise your hand and show. This is what I feel. This is what I feel. Feel me, feel me, feel me. Hey, hey, hey. West side, tell me, can you feel me? East side, tell me, can you feel me? South side, take me. Tell me, can you feel me? Feel me. This is a song written by Robert Sylvester Kelly in 1998. It's titled What I Feel, Issues, Lyrics, Copyright Universal Music, Publishing Group. What are your thoughts about his emotions on that song? I need you to really go back and listen to it with the music because the music is what truly makes the, the words really shine for him. And you can see what he was going through. So you can take whatever was happening to him in 1998 and know that this is what he was trying to express in his lyrics. And yes, um, please go and listen to that song. So I recently dealt with a traumatic experience yesterday. I talk about trauma-based emotion and how easy it is for people to see the truth in a lie and a lie in the truth. You know what I mean? So um, we talked about how we were going to keep these stories connected to Robert Sylvester Kelly. And I'm going to share with you how, say, possibly they're going to use the individuals who were considered victims of the R. Kelly uh, case as having been telling the truth, but it was not, it was their truth, if you will, because we on the outside looking in saw something totally different. So this traumatic e event that I experienced yesterday, my grandson and I were at the laundromat and this couple came in. We all, we're sitting there, you know, doing our own thing. There was a lady that was already there. We'll name her Callie. A couple comes in and we'll call them Jane and John. And they began talking to this young girl, Callie. Um, so Callie was waiting on her clothes to dry. She looked over at me after their conversation and asked me to call 911 after they left. That this woman, Jane, had a bruise on her head as big as a fist. Literally, Callie told me that the woman gave her a sign as though she needed help. Now, after blessing Callie, when Jane blessed Callie with $40, the couple then left and walked to the corner store that was right down the way to get her something to eat, them and her. Okay. So they obviously thought that Callie was homeless because she had her backpack and when she asked me to call 911, I didn't hesitate because I was thinking, oh God, something is about to shoot off. Something's about to pop off. As I was speaking with dispatch, a whole other family was then encountered by this woman, Callie, because she thought that the guy who we will call Ken, that was with this other family, had given John subliminal signals that she was calling the police. Ken also had a daughter there and a son. They were being very polite. I'm holding her back. Yet I understand where Callie was coming from because she had a history of domestic abuse and her mother was severely beaten by her father. This is what I'm learning as I'm holding her back from looking at the situation in a hysteric. So Callie's passion was what kept her emotions so extremely high at that point. Of course, Jane and John came back with the food and drink in hand for Callie and themselves, not knowing that the police had been called, nothing. All of a sudden, six officers surround the laundromat. As I stated to Callie after she was so upset that they were just not taking him into custody 
on her word alone, that they were coming into a hostile situation. So they had to take everybody's scenario in a separate area and question what was going on. Okay. So everybody looked at the fact that Jane's face had this busted, it was very, very, it was a bad hit. Okay. So John, which is Jane's boyfriend, he smelled of alcohol. He began talking, stating that they had a 90 pound pit bull and she was walking the dog that as he began um, running, as the dog began running, she toppled over and fell to the ground. Now, James said, Jane said absolutely nothing, but yet shook her head with what John was stating to the police. Callie watched this from a distance crying to me, stating that she knew that Jane was asking for help and that in the midst of the situation, she was freezing up from the emotion. She's like, don't let them let her walk away without putting that man in, in jail. So I bring this story up to one, share a true and real time life traumatic situation. Number two, to share how easy a situation could have gotten out of control in that laundromat. Because I forgot to share that Callie actually began hitting the hitting Ken, the one with the daughter and the son. Finally, Ken just, you know, allowed her to be abusive to him because she's a product of her environment. I want to get your thoughts on this situation because how easy is it to become emotional from trauma the way we have experienced life? So if Ken had been someone who experienced abuse in his life, he would have, or maybe he had a weapon. What if he had a weapon in the car? And this woman's hitting on him and, you know, telling him he's, she's going to beat him up and all this other stuff. What could have happened? You know, so how easy is it to become emotional from trauma the way we have experienced life? And I can take um, the situation of the women and the families who abused the uh, right of freedom of speech to discuss Robert Sylvester Kelly's life in a drama and a chaos that they said their daughters ensued upon being with him. And yet the daughter stated, no, this didn't happen. It wasn't true. So the lies of trauma can really bond people to believe things when they're absolutely not true. Thank God that Callie was so passionate because if Jane really needed help, she would have gotten it that day because Callie was not backing down. Thank God Ken and his daughter and his son were reasonable people. Thank God for my grandson who remained balanced and just helped me to see the situation without really becoming aggressive. Okay. And thank God that Jane and John didn't have a weapon and took it out on Callie or anybody else in that laundromat. It could have gone just all bad. Okay. And there's other scenarios that I'm not even thinking about that could have took place, but we're grateful. We are blessed. Our karmic balance check system went to our advantage. It went for us. Um, as we stated in video one with rejection and denial, emotions make you sad. Sometimes emotion makes you cry. Sometimes Emotion makes you love the wrong people sometimes, but the experiences we have been through is going to shape how we see the story. It's going to shape the, what is that called? The narrative. Yeah, it's going to share. It's, it's going to shape the narrative. Jane and John may never help another homeless person again because of what Callie did. Even if she was or wasn't homeless, if they thought she was homeless, they'll probably never help another one because of the fact of what happened. Um, they bought her food. They gave her $40. They, you know, asked her if she was okay. They were about to pray with her. They shared how ungrateful Callie was when all they were trying to do was help her. 
There were some serious rejection issues here that dealt with the lack of effective communication that went on in this story. The emotions were real true for Callie. When a closed door is shut, it is shut for a reason. During one's life journey, they may find themselves conditioned by their personal experience. Robert Sylvester Kelly is one of those individuals because he has to deal with the fact that he knows that these people lied on him and that's their truth, but that's his lie. You know, he knows that that is a lie. So if he holds that that is his lie, that, that he knows that they believe something that's not true. It's the same as Callie placing herself back into that time of trauma when she was a little girl who saw her dad abuse her mother. Okay. So Sylvester Kelly knows who scandalized his good name and who took his kindness for weakness. Now in life, we must think about our actions and how it will affect another person. Clear and precise, true communication solves a great deal of chaos. One can freely keep following their dreams and goals as long as they review what is happening in their life circumstance. Make it make sense to you. Make it true to you. Where did Robert go wrong? Why was everyone surrounding him so full of hate towards him? And I understand that he was a superstar and I understand the, I get the whole concept of hate. I really and truly get that. A new door of adjacent possibilities can manifest within seconds, within milliseconds. This can be whatever we choose it to be for our lives. So let's think about some turn of events that could have taken place. Number one, in the laundromat scenario, if you don't have one of your own. When we become aware of what happens, I think we can make better life choices. What about you? So I have three questions that I would like to get your views on relating to life in general for the liars of the Kelly camp, those people who were honorably discharging his ability to be a success. We're looking at them in general and traumatic experiences, the ones you hold on to or the ones that we've discussed in the, in the um, story here. Number one, how should one react to being told no? Whether you're at work with a spouse, as an adult, it's sometimes hard to hear the word no. So how should we react when being told no? That's the first question. Number two, how do you cope with traumatic situations such as the one we spoke of today? Or how would you have handled Robert Sylvester Kelly's situation with the way that his traumatic situations happened and scandalized his name? And number three, who was right in the laundromat situation? So I'm going to let the chat run so you can put your... Uh, answers in the chat box. And again, if you don't want to share and you want to just keep a running notebook of your emotional uh, questions that we ask here, feel free to do so. And I'm going to put them on the Q and a, um, how should one react to being told? No. How do you cope with traumatic situations? And who was right in the laundromat situation? Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and um, giving this podcast to someone in need. We thank you so much for being part of Robert Sylvester Kelly, um, the, the, the Appeal TV, R. Kelly Appeal TV, and, um, and really putting all of your energy into this, this vibration that we have running here. So as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.